Welcome to the Heavy Spoilers Show, I'm your host Paul, and in this video we're breaking down The Walking Dead. The Ones Who Live, Episode 2 is out now, and throughout this video we're going to be going through it all. Last week I was a bit sceptical on whether I was going to cover it, but now I'm obsessed with walkers just like Gary Lineker. <laughs> Now I'm on a mission to bring you weekly breakdowns and give you my thoughts on how the series is going. The new entries fill with easter eggs, lots of crap pun opportunities and references and clues about where we could be heading. So come with me my partner in crime and let us make our way through the land of the dead. Let me help you remember to hit that thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for videos like this every day. By the way, a huge thank you for clicking this, now let us get into the ones who live. Now we begin with a herd of walkers and get focused on one carrying petrol and kerosene, wearing a t-shirt that says, gas man let me help you. Around him we see an explosion happening and this walker is also used in the same way. Turns out that he's part of that giant herd at the end of season 11 with Michonne later trying to make her way through them. Now this idea of a man in an explosion starting things is symbolic for a character that we meet in the entry. That is Nat who's obsessed with burning things and eventually his lighter gets given to Michonne. The idea of someone helping her is represented in him and in the end she clearly wants to burn it all down. Brings things full circle from this gas man opening shot and has a much deeper meaning on a second watch. From here we cut to the title sequence and then get a time jump that takes us to 6 years after the bridge. Delivering a narration we see how Michonne somewhat mirrors Rick as last week he told a story through the use of letters. Here we see as she recounts the main series and we get clips from what we become. That episode dropped during season 10 and it was the 13th entry in the penultimate season. Michonne discovered his boots and the phone which confirmed to her that Rick was still alive. We then had the scene where she rescued the pair who we learn have taken her to their community. Michonne would then pop up during season 11 but we're filling in a hell of a lot here of stuff we didn't know. Now due to Michonne's skills they're desperate to keep her in the community and it somewhat mirrors Rick in the Civil Republic. They see him as someone they can use and Michonne's seen more for her value than what she actually wants. The cries about being back with who she loves falls on deaf ears and they constantly put obstacles in her way. This includes how there's a giant herd moving beside them and yay guys we've got a new name for walkers. That is the wailing which in eastern territories is meant to be spirits that embody grief and sorrow. Bit of a reach but there's a South Korean horror film called The Wailing which is about ghosts, ghouls and zombies. She of course also wears a Japanese samurai costume and carries a sword, a bloody, a bloody badass sword. Now this episode is also laced with lots of western iconography as we have a convoy travelling through the country. There's the music, Nat refers to picking his wagon and the group also wear ponchos. The trucks and RVs circle like wagon camps and move in train like formations like those wild west cowboys. Kingback's character wears a cowboy hat as well and the leader's got a big stars and stripes flag in the corner of her office. Now unlike Michonne, they're happy to leave people behind and they all live by a code. Got me wondering if that was something that was commonplace back then because it was also something they did in Rings of Power. Now not to bring that up mate because I, I know you guys might not like it, but then bloody Harfoot, they used to also leave people behind if they couldn't keep up. Lenny Henry, a swine? Either way, she's given a horse, a mama and a book for the kids and she heads out as a lone samurai. It's here that we get the scene from the season 11 finale and watch as she heads out into the wailing. This herd's massive and it reminded me of one of Alpha's but we see how Michonne makes quick work of them. Using that rocket launcher that debuted last week we see she's knocked off her horse by the gas man's head. Purple explosions then start to line the countryside and this attracts the walkers to move in opposite directions. It acts like a parting of the Red Sea and it turns out the convoy wants to go with her. Normally when we're like 13 years into The Walking Dead or, or whatever it is, I think it's even longer than that, and they start introducing new characters, I, I can be, as an audience member, I can be like, Oh for fuck's sake. Sometimes they're absolutely crap, but I have to say I really like this group. Just nice getting a campfire scene with them, and that's sort of like a stand-in for Eugene. Guy's an inventor who can create explosions, and yeah, I, I think he's the standout in this episode. I did think it was a bit daft she inspired all these people to ditch their lives to go and help Rick but it at least gives Michonne some people to bounce off of. This highlights how the group have changed their ways and now they're no longer leaving people behind. We also learn the couple's having a baby and it shows how these nomads are trying to make the most of it rather than being resigned to the doom and gloom you get here. And after a long night's sleep they head to Bridges Terminal which reminded me a lot of the Terminus location. 
However, before getting there, they're bombarded by an Apache helicopter, and shoutouts to editor Matt for pointing out it's like the chlorine gas used to take out Omaha. They also intended to use it on Portland because it was becoming a burden. That all pulls from the world beyond, including Huck, who Matt found some similarities with in Okafor. Okafor killed marines to protect people, which is something that Huck also did as well. The reason is that they were getting close to Philadelphia. If the CRM sees a caravan of people moving north in New Jersey, they're just going to eliminate them. Either way, there's clear allusions to things like the Blitz and mustard gas which have been used in warfare. My great granddad was actually gassed in World War I and apparently he always had issues breathing even later into his life. The characters can't breathe and bleed from their noses which makes it absolutely agonising to watch. It blankets the landscape and makes them flee to the mall, which I believe is a clear nod to Dawn of the Dead. Zack Snyder then elevated things for his remake and had a pregnant woman tied down to a bed which is also mirrored here. We can see that there's blood on the pillow next to her and I'm guessing that she attacked her partner and then this is how he turned. Really heartbreaking scene and it shows how evil the CRM are as they fight indiscriminately against the group. Michonne finds them all turned to dead except for Nat who's created a ring of fire with aftershave and perfume in order to protect himself. Plays in his backstory of creating fires and burning things and he sparks up a lighter signifying how the fire helped him. We then get a scene in which Michonne recoups and recovers and she uses an oxygen mask to help with her lungs. Clear that the pair start going stir crazy a bit with Nat saying that this is all he's got. Michonne wants him to go to Alexandria but he wrestles with this while sparking up his lighter. He says he knows how it will end while staring at the flame and this could foreshadow the character's death in the future in which he's shot while the forest burns around him. Reach. It's not a reach, that's, that's symbolism that and he refused to leave anyone behind but I think in reality it was him who didn't want to be left. In the Walking Dead world you have to work with others to survive and I don't think any of them would have made it this far without somebody's help. Nat knows that and thus he had to keep the others close which I think is another similarity that he shared with Eugene. Eugene lied about who he was to be protected and Nat like him probably realised it was about strength in numbers. Obviously Nat's also a little person so he would rely on others and I think this is why this story about the samurai sword also falls apart. Rick's trying to paint him out as being a really fearsome warrior but clearly you know there's people who take notice of this. Again, it's a really great character and casting, and it was kind of sad seeing how he went out. As they hit the road, we see they use walkers like menial workers, which might be a reference to the end of Shaun of the Dead. Coming across a cruise at East Arthur Safe Harbor, we see how the bodies have been piled up and burned. This obviously indicates that it was done by man, and Michonne seems to accept that Rick might be gone. In a twist, though, it's Nat who wants her to keep pushing, and he translates the message on the phones, which are believe a little longer. I kind of think because he's got nothing left now that he's sort of in a position where he's the one that needs the idea of Rick as well. Nat's lost everything and thus he's just holding onto that and keeping going means as much to him as it does her. We then get a moment that brings us to current day which is where things come full circle from last week. I love how this kind of filled in the blanks because the way they left things made me think that she knew it was Rick in the chopper. Just seemed weird that they randomly shot a chopper out of the sky but them not taking any chances makes way more sense. Nat has built a custom made rocket launcher and he believes the first rocket was a dud. As we know though it landed in Okafor before then going off and helping to bring it down. Things line up perfectly and we see how Nat sends another rocket as some of them flee which leads to Michonne and Rick coming face to face. Remembering those CRM killed she wants to look them in the eyes and it's in that that she ends up unmasking him. Big moment for the series and I could have happily had them end the episode there however there's still more to come and Rick knows that they won't be able to escape. He's well aware of the trap that they're caught in and knows that they have to play it smarter. They're just three people who are up against an army. Well, two people because that, uh, that goes out. But yeah, they're two people who are up against an army and there's no way they'd be able to outrun them. So Rick stages things and pins it on Nat. Love the detail where he also tells Michonne not to call them walkers because that will give away that the pair know each other. Like, why has everything got a different name? It's so stupid, but it's also one of the things that I, I quite, find it quite charming. Now either way, we call back to the opening and we watch as she participates in an interview. Huge shout outs again to Matt for bringing up how similar this is to the one with Felix and she's put in a similar position to what Rick was initially. She gets a uniform like his and Thorns from episode 1 and we get a similar shot to how he walked out. They have the truck lined up with a logo on the side and both characters walked out where we panned out to get a clearer view. Really good way of telling us they're in the same spot but now Rick has much more power. Sliding in the back, Rick tells her about his hand and talks about how it was one of the last times that he tried to escape. 
There's emphasis on one of the last times there because it shows he, he had given up after burning those phones. Michonne tells him about Judith, but she skips over the fact the pair have a son, which I believe is done because she doesn't want to burden him. Rick also brings up the death squads, which could be connected to the world beyond plot of the CRM, studying reanimation and test subjects. The lighter is given back, and this carries some subtext to it, as it highlights that she wants to burn this all down. Staring out over the complex, she sees the Apache helicopters, which were of course what led to all her friend's deaths. Sparking up the flame, it spells out danger, and that there, that there mate, that's subtext. The rat symbolizes obviousness. Now it's at this point that we get a coda to the entry and see that Jadis has returned. During Michonne's rise, we got cuts of a bottle being poured out, with that reveal being what we get here. I believe her last appearance was in the world beyond season 2, but let me know if she's popped up in another time. Chron chronology's all over the place at the moment with this, but obviously she also knows who Michonne is. She knows that the sword with Nat wasn't his as well, and threatens if they try to escape, all the ones he loves will die. She was never worried about Rick escaping, but Michonne shows up, the two of them together, they can do anything. She obviously lied about having a bee as well, so her survival in the CRM depends on them not finding out who Michonne is. It's a really thrilling scene, and I think she's going to have to go because there's no way Rick's going to let her stand in the way of it. She's been back and forth over her shades of morality pretty much every time she's appeared, and yeah, that Charlie's Theron, Fast and the Furious, Ezra Miller and Fantastic Beast haircut, this shows that she's fully on the dark side. Are we the baddies? <laughs> Like, I know she had it in the world beyond as well, mate. I'm just saying, mate. It, 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 but it's a striking haircut. We'll, we'll leave it there. It's a striking haircut. Very, very, very military. So yeah, shut up. Yeah, she's she's got to go, and I'm really excited to see what happens next. Just throws a curveball into it, and again, I really enjoyed this episode. I thought they might lose some steam after last week, but now nah, they kept going, and that it just paid off everything from that brilliant first one. It feels like the show is back on form and I hope you guys have enjoyed our coverage too and make sure you leave your comments below. Please drop a like on the video and if you want to support the channel as a member of the Spoiler Society then please click the join button. You get early access to videos every week and it goes such a long way to helping us out. If you want to get some heavy spoilers merch you've also got our t-shirts located just below the video that will let you pick up all kinds of tops like our Theory Time one, me and the boys, Loki, whatever you want mate, it's a go, go support. So yeah, thanks for sitting through the video. If you missed our video last week, what the hell is wrong with you? Uh, but I'll let you off because it's on screen right now and you're going to go watch it. So yeah, huge thank you for clicking this. I've been your host, Paul. I'm going to see you next time, I hope. And yeah, you take care of yourself, mate. Peace.